Welcome to the video. This is the first in a series of videos I'm making to introduce very basic information about digital images. These videos will be more general in nature than my other videos and they won't be focused on the CSI PIC software. These videos are aimed at people who are new to working with digital images or those who want a refresher. If you watch this video and have any questions, please reach out to me. I'll do my best to help you. We'll start with the definition of a pixel. Pixel is short for picture element. They are small squares of one color or shade of gray that make up a digital image. So when you zoom into a picture, you eventually see these squares of one color. These are the pixels. In this example, these are the pixels that you see when you zoom into one of these flowers here. The pixels of an image are arranged in a rectangular array. This array has so many rows and so many columns. The number of rows equals the height of the image in pixels. The number of columns equals the width of the image in pixels. If this over here is an image array, it has seven columns and nine rows. So the width is seven pixels and the height is nine pixels. Pixel locations are given using X and Y coordinates, where the X refers to the column number of the pixel and Y refers to the row number. So the location of this pixel is 0, 0 because we start counting the columns here and we start with 0. So this would be column 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. For rows, we also start up here in the top left corner, and the rows would be numbered like this. It would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this pixel, the x and y coordinates, are 2 and 5. Image size refers to the number of pixels in an image. You just multiply the number of rows by the number of columns. So this image has 7 times 9 equals 63 pixels. A 12 megapixel image has 12 million pixels, so they're probably arranged something like this, about 4,000 columns by 3,000 rows. So like I said in the previous slide, image size equals the number of pixels in an image. Image file size is a different thing. It's the size of the image file on your hard drive or memory card in bytes. It's how many bytes are needed to store the file. The number of bytes needed will depend on a number of things, including the image size, the image file type, so bitmap, TIFF, JPEG, that kind of thing, the amount of compression used, if any, and if compression was used, how compressible an image is. For example, images with a lot of black areas would be easy to compress and would make much smaller files than ones that have a lot of sharp edges and noise. So image size is not equal to file size. Here I'm just showing different sizes of image saved as different file types going from bigger to smaller. TIFF and bitmap are uncompressed, so they'll be the biggest. Then you get into high quality JPEG and JPEG 2000. They are almost lossless. Then high quality WSQ, that's the FBI format for fingerprints and then you'll get into the medium and low quality JPEG. They use a type of compression that's lossy, so you get smaller file sizes at the price of image quality. Here I've saved a couple of different images using different file formats to just show how the file sizes change. So this image is a fingerprint image. It's grayscale. It's about a 600 kilopixel image. The bitmap and the TIFF are almost the same size, around 600 kilobytes. High quality JPEG is next at 391. The two different JPEG 2000 formats have the same size. And then the WSQ is a little smaller. And then the medium and low quality JPEGs are very small. So all these images will actually have the same image size, but the image file size has changed quite drastically depending on the file format you use and the amount of compression. This is an image that started out as a raw color image from a Sony camera. Saved as a TIFF and bitmap, they're uncompressed and they're about 29 megabytes. Then you've got the raw file. They've obviously used some kind of lossless compression for this. Then the JPEG 2000 files and the high quality JPEG. 
and you can see there's quite a difference there. And then the medium and the low quality JPEGs are down here, so the file can be tiny. I'm just showing the sizes here. I may do another video where I actually show the different losses and changes made to the image as you save them in these different formats. I wanted to show these two images side by side as a warning for when it comes to JPEG images. Using anything but the highest quality JPEG compression will result in artifacts like you see here. With JPEG compression, when you zoom into an image, you can often see these 9 by 9 pixel square blocks. This is bad enough, but it's especially bad if you're working with 500 ppi friction ridge images because these 9x9 nine nine blocks correspond quite nicely to the width of the ridges, so it can really obscure details in the ridges and it can also hurt the effectiveness of automated minutia detection and ridge flow determination. So to be on the safe side, I recommend saving your images as TIFFs or bitmaps and only use JPEG if you need to email somebody an image just to make it smaller. Now we'll get into pixel intensities, also known as pixel bit depths. So pixel intensities for binary images can only have one of two intensities, either 0 for black or 1 for white. Each pixel only needs one bit of data to encode its intensity. This is a binary image, black and white image. Here I've just showed some pixels and their corresponding pixel intensities. So the black 0, white is 1. Binary images are mostly used for graphics and forms and are not a significant image type for forensics. Pixel intensities for grayscale images. Grayscale images have more than two shades of gray from black to white. For 8-bit grayscale images, this is the most common form, there are 256 possible shades of gray. Zero to 255, where 0 is black and 255 is white. 12 bit images have 4096 shades of gray. So this is a grayscale image, and here are some pixels with the intensities shown. So black is 0, white 255, here's the middle gray, it's 127. Here you can see the shades of gray available given the number of bits used to encode each pixel intensity. This is where I found this graphic, if you wanted to go look at this article. So if you have one bit pixel depth, you get two shades of gray. This is the binary case, so you have black and white. If you have two bits, you can have four shades of gray. So black, dark gray, light gray, and a white. And so on. At eight bits, you get the 256 shades of gray. After eight bits or so, it's very difficult to see any difference. But that's not to say there's no good reason to capture images with greater than 8 bits per pixel. In forensics, photographing or scanning evidence with higher than 8 bits per pixel intensity can be very helpful when something is difficult to see because it allows you to use really dramatic contrast stretching to make things more visible. The pixel intensities for color image. So in this case, each pixel has a red, green, and a blue component, RGB. For 24-bit color images, 8 bits encode the red component, 8 bits encode the green, and 8 bits encode the blue. So that's one byte each. 24-bit color images can have over 16 million possible colors. So this is a color image, and these are the RGB values for just some random colors that I chose. So as you can see, for this red pixel, the red component is much higher than the green and the blue. For orange, it's got a large component of red and green. For yellow, the blue is at zero, and the red and green are almost the same. For blue, the blue component is highest, and so on. For black, all zero. A pure white pixel would be 255, 255, 255. And true shades of gray, the red, green, and blue will always be the same. Fun fact, on average it said that the human eye can differentiate between approximately 10 million colors. So now I'm going to talk about color image channels, also known as color planes. Remember that I said a 24-bit color image uses 8 bits for red, 8 bits for the green, and 8 bits for the blue. So if you treat these colors as separate grayscale images, you get what are referred to as the color channels or planes. So for this image here, if I just extract the red component of the image, this is the resulting image, the red decoration is a lot brighter than the others. 
for the green channel, the green bulb is a little brighter, and for the blue, it's the blue bulb that's brighter. It's possible to create other channels using the red and green and blue values, just using some different mathematical transforms. You can create a luminance channel, where it's sort of an average of the red, green, and blue, but there's a little bit more emphasis on the green and the red. You can also create something called a hue channel, where the values correspond to the most dominant color, and the saturation, where the values correspond to the brilliance of a color. There are other channels you can create using the red, green, and the blue. You can create the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, which I didn't show here. So this is the only slide specifically about CSI picks. Uh, comparator Matcher and Case APHIS software, when you look under an open image, you will see this information. This is just the name of the image that you have open. This is the image width in pixels and the image height in pixels. This is the bit depth for each pixel, so this is a 24-bit color image. This is the resolution. I'm going to get into that in a separate video, so I'm not going to talk about it here. This is the X and Y pixel location of the pixel underneath your mouse or your cursor at that time. So as you move your cursor around over an image, these numbers will update. And these are the RGB values of the pixel under your mouse or your cursor. So these will also update as you move around your image. So for this image, if I wanted to calculate the image size, I would just take the width and the height and multiply them. So it's almost a 16 megapixel image. The file size, I can see using Windows Explorer by right clicking on it and just click properties. It's a 8 megabyte image. Thank you for your attention. Please reach out if you have any suggestions for future videos I could do in this series. And stay tuned for video 2, which is going to be dedicated to image resolution.